Now, one of the things that I emphasized I wanted to do over the next few months is to help us to re-fall in love with God. Because sometimes we just serve God and we do a lot of the church-related things, but then we forget about who God is, what He's done for us. Because ultimately, like we've talked about with our vision statement, we want to glorify God. And I honestly believe if we will truly take the first commandment, the greatest commandment, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to really be wise by fearing God and keeping His commandments, then everything else will eagerly desire to do. We'll read through the book pages of the Bible and say, I want to do that because I want to love and glorify God. And so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting a new sermon series emphasizing who God is and what He has done for us. Now one of the things that I want us to also do is I don't want us just to think about all the things God's done for us and then just in there and think, okay, you know what? God has done all these things for me. I'm going to do what I want. And if God's doing it all for me because then that would be self-glory. But ultimately, we want to thank God and realize who He is and what He's done and imitate Him and become like Him. Because that's where we show God, we truly believe in you, we love you, and we want to imitate you because that's how we glorify you. And so that's one of the things we're going to be covering over the next few months to help us fall in love back again with God. Really uplift and encourage us and say, He is a God I can be proud to worship. He is the God of the Bible. He is our Creator. And when I think about that, I think about a scenario that really breaks my heart. One of the things that really breaks my heart and one of the things I really hate doing is I really hate hurting people's feelings. Uh, I, I, don't like, I don't like being at odds with someone and when I hurt someone's feelings, I like to apologize right away because I just want to get it over with and apologize and be in the right standing. I don't like the idea of knowing that there's a broken relationship and it's my fault. And, and it really tears me up. I mean, some of you know that I've called you up at times and apologized to you. I uh, humbled myself before you and apologized. Some of you, I, I find out later on that I hurt your feelings even a year later and then I feel bad and I apologize and I cry about it. But, but I just don't like the thought of not feeling like I'm forgiven. Especially when I know I was the one in the wrong. And this is something that a lot of us feel. And a lot of us experience is sometimes we know that we've hurt and wronged people to the point where we know we were the ones at fault and causing the relationship to be hurt and broken. And sometimes those people won't ever forgive us. And sometimes they'll say, you know, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't care if you're sorry. I just don't want anything to do with you. I've experienced that before. I've known people who I've counseled. A lot of people I talk to, they say, you know what, that's me. I'm sorry, I want to have a right relationship, but then they don't want anything to do with me. And, and that feeling hurts, knowing that you don't feel forgiven. But one of the amazing things about God is, I think about my relationship with God, and I know that when it comes to separation from Him, when I know about breaking down of a relationship, I know that I'm the one at fault because of my sin. And, and I feel guilty about it. I feel remorseful. I want to repent. I want to apologize. I want to change my life. And the amazing thing is, God isn't like that person who will come and say, you know what? I don't care if you're sorry. I don't care who you are. And I don't want anything to do with you. God isn't like that. One of the amazing things is, even though I was the one who broke down the relationship with God, even though I was the one who offended Him, even though I was the one who sinned against Him, He's the one that says, I want a relationship with you as well. I forgive you. And I just think about that, and I just think, you know what, that's an amazing feeling, knowing that I was the one who broke down the relationship with God. Of all the people who I can hurt and offend, the person I don't want to hurt and offend the most is God, my Creator. But to understand that He loves me so much that He says, you know what, I forgive you. Every bad thing you have done against me, I forgive you. And I don't know about you, but the experience of knowing uh, when you offended someone and they say, I forgive you, and then everything's all right, and you go out and you eat a hamburger together or something, it feels great. And that's what the experience you have with God, is that He forgives you, and then you, you get to embrace and enjoy that forgiveness. We all have baggage, we all have histories, we all have things that we've done wrong, things that we're not proud of. 
But the amazing thing is God doesn't want us to live in guilt, but He wants us to live in grace. God doesn't want us to be defined by our sin, but He wants us to be defined by His holiness. And this is one of the amazing things we learn about God, is His character of forgiveness. You know, a lot of times as Christians, it's easy to sometimes forget about the forgiveness of God. We'll logically know, yeah, God forgives me, but we don't really embrace it or understand it. And sometimes we start to get to the point where we can't tend to doubt, does God really forgive me? How could God possibly forgive me? How can God love me? Look at all the bad things I've done, even though I know I was wrong. How could God love and forgive me? The answer is because he loves you. And because of his own nature and character of one that pushes him to forgive you. As one who hates sin, it would be his joy to forgive you because he wants to wash away sin. Because he loves holiness. One of the amazing things that we learn is that God is willing to forgive you completely. Not, not just partially, not in a state where you have to second guess God. But he makes known without a shadow of a doubt, you are forgiven. And I don't know about you, but that is one of the best feelings in the world, knowing that we're guilty of that, but God forgives us. I know a lot of you, as I'm talking about this, can think about some of the worst things in your life. Some of the things that you're even struggling with right now. And if you give it up to God, he'll forgive you. One of the passages that really encourages me a lot is 1 John 1, 7-9. Which says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his, uh, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You see, one of the amazing things is oftentimes we question God and we worry, does God really love and forgive me? And what would possibly make him forgive us? Well, the answer here is saying, you know what, if you will walk in the light, if you will walk in accordance with His Word, if you will walk in the way that He wants you to, there are going to be times in your life where you may stumble. But the thing is, He will forgive you. If you're willing to confess this before God, He'll wash it away. If you have a covenant relationship with God and you have access to the blood of Christ, as we see through like repentance and baptism, then when you, after that point, you don't only receive forgiveness at baptism. It's even after baptism when you do wrong, as long as you're walking in the light. Because just like when you get married to your wife, sometimes you're going to do wrong against her. Sometimes you're going to do wrong against your husband, but forgiveness can come and be present. Same thing with us. You know, even after we get into this covenant relationship with God, forgiveness can still exist. And, that, and, and the people often, and the amazing thing about this is that God is willing to purify you from all sin. From all sin. Not most sin or a few sins or we think, you know what, God can't forgive this sin. Yes, He can. Because He said He can purify you from all sin and purify you from all unrighteousness. This should be without a shadow of a doubt. And then people start saying, well, well, can God forgive me? Will God forgive me? The answer is yes. And the no reason why we can know the answer is yes because it's based on His character that says, I am faithful. That if you walk in the light and confess your sins before me, I will forgive you. I am just. Christ has paid the price to forgive you of your sins. And I just think that's an amazing thought. To think that the God of the universe is willing to wash away our sins. And, it, and it, it's not because he forgives us because of who we are, but because of who he is. Can I trust the fact that God would forgive me? If I confess my sins and I live in, as He wants me to do? The answer is yes, because God is faithful. God is, God is faithful when He says He'll forgive you. God is faithful to His covenant to forgive you. One of the amazing things that we see is this forgiveness is so great that if you're walking in the light, the original language here shows a, a language that shows that if you're walking in the light, then the blood of Jesus constantly is flowing. So that you can constantly be in the right relationship with God. That's how sure, that's how active He is in forgiving you. This is an amazing thing. But then we also tend to ask ourselves, well, how much...